Prey came along and it was um, we had our chance to do we had the chance to go abroad and do a video and we went to um, Acapulco which I thought was going to be this amazing destination I mean maybe it was in the 70s but we went there and I just wasn't impressed with it they were telling us that be careful of the sea lice you know and that put me off going in the sea and we did this video with um, with these producers and directors and it was a good video but we, we was doing all the um, sexual thing and stuff you know like I was on this I was on near this fountain covered in a baby all doing all this down my chest and stuff and I don't know I, I think even then it felt a little bit uncomfortable but you, you was I don't know you was looking more looking at the big picture that girls like it you know girls like this kind of thing uh, maybe not now but they did then um, yeah and we did the video and we absolutely loved the song Gary wrote the song and amazingly it went to number one well it wasn't amazingly but it was because we knew it had really big potential to get in the top ten but to get to number one I mean that's every group's dream yeah in a big way it interfered with our lives um, I mean you had constant flow of girls outside your house every day I mean that wasn't such a big problem but it's the things that they did you know they, you know, they would write all over everything disturb the neighbours um, break things sometimes try pinching things out of your garden um, and it got bad once I used to have um, a stalker um, who would wait in a lay-by as I drove past on the motorway and then she would follow me and she would write me letters saying um, I've seen you waiting outside my bedroom while I've been getting changed I've seen you waiting in your car obviously to cause a bit of a disturbance between me and my ex-girlfriend and once um, once upon a time I had a Ferrari and I drove it into Manchester and um, I did something and I came back and my Ferrari had a scratch all the way down the side of it and um, I didn't have any idea at all who it was I, all I knew was that this girl had followed me into Manchester and a few days later she wrote a letter saying I wonder who scratched your Ferrari with loads of question marks behind it so I obviously knew it was her we used to have a few um, spliff sessions they were good times and Gary used to always go on about how much he liked trees things <laughs> and I, I liked hills you like trees and everyone else like girls you know we had, we had some funny times I mean me and me and Gary we, we stayed in this um, it was this penthouse suite in Sydney right at the top of this hotel it was amazing I mean it was a view of the um, opera house and we've got these old Polaroids of trying to light this spliff this big spliff with this lighter but but with tears running down our eyes you know I mean it's one of those things where you had to be there to know what was actually going on but it was just hilarious just hilarious I've had some good times but anything to do with cocaine and stuff like that I've never touched it and nobody touched it in the group whether Robbie touched it near the end um, near the end the his last concert before he left is um, a different story I mean, I, I can't say whether he did because I never saw him taking it. Gary, when I first met Gary, I mean, I was unsure of him. And as we got to know each other, we became best friends. I used to always share a room with him. I was always interested in what he did as far as studio work and the way a song's written and Just a, a, an amazing, an amazing person, but with um, more serious, more seriousness than me. He was um, stingier than me, 
There was reasons that I say stingy because he sold me a keyboard, um, which was probably about ten years old. It was one of these first sampler keyboards that does one second samples, and I'm sure he ripped me off on it. I think he sold it me for something like 250 quid when the thing was 350 quid brand new. And this was a keyboard that was in his back cupboard that hadn't even been used. When, when we used to travel about in the van in the early days and we needed to make phone calls, obviously mobile phones were the um, big thing back then. And he had this bloody enormous mobile phone like this with this big aerial on it. And um, there was a lead going to a big car battery. <laughs> it's really, really ancient. But um, we always wanted to use it to phone somebody. And he used to charge us a quid each time. No matter how long the phone call. Quid. Come on, quid. Someone's got to pay for the um, bills. Yeah, uh, not good. Prey was... Um, no, Prey was a great song. I loved that song from the first time I heard it. One of the things I concentrated on in the group was um, backing vocals and I was given the chance every time when we was in the studio to work out harmonies for these songs. And um, it made me proud for Gary to say, what's the next harmony, Doug? What's the next, because his nickname was Doug, for short for Douglas. What's the next harmony, Doug? and um, I'd come, with the, come up with the harmony straight away and that was a big thing on Prey, the backing vocals which we did um, and the same with um, Why Can't I Wake Up With You I loved recording them songs because we was in the studio watching how they were created and watching the backing vocals being built up so and the video I enjoyed doing the video and also going to a so called exotic country Oh yeah, me and Robbie, we um, we used to do this fan service in Japan. Um, we'd all go in the loading bay at the back. Each of us sit on um, each of us would sit in a certain part, and all the fans would run in. Loads of these fans, these Japanese fans, who had saved up all year to um, pay for this hotel, which was incredibly expensive in Tokyo, um, and they would save up all the money just to stay in this hotel the nights we were staying in and we'd do this fan service where they would all line up with all these presents and we used to get loads of presents you know all adidas tops nike and so many things i mean me and matt got a sony dat machine each and that was only because i asked for one i said that's what we need and they brought us the next time which is really cheeky on me but it came in handy and they'd give you these room numbers these japanese fans and um I think in the early days when they first started giving them us, I thought we, we probably thought we was in for a promise. And um, you'd go to these rooms and there was, there was about 10 people staying in one room and they'd have the pot noodles and they'd have the fast food with them because they couldn't afford to pay for, um, pay for the hotel food because they'd just about scraped together enough money to stay in the hotel. But what me and Robbie used to do, we'd have all these room numbers and we'd go to all these room numbers, see how many presents we could collect. And um, and we'd also say, we'll, we'll take marks for you. <laughs> we would end up keeping it or someone else's. And we used to play stupid. We just used to play stupid. Like we'd go in the bathroom, put smear, smear toothpaste over each other and there would be, um, some of these girls would come from school to the hotel room. We'd, we'd go in the wardrobe, look, find the school uniforms put them on or play or get them to put the school uniforms on <laughs> and um, and we'd raid the minibar so which wasn't very nice as being as I tried saving money and we was raiding their minibar with, with a beer which cost something like five pounds it's not very good for their pockets but good for ours take that means six years of my life that I still can't believe happened to me. I can't believe how successful it became. I mean, I can believe how successful it became because we worked our butts off to get it successful. It was six years of our life, six years totally 
of hard work, of fun, good times, bad times, um, a bit of a roller coaster really. And it was, it was a group take that that was um, dominated the nineties.